Now, news broke this morning that Ryanair is to close bases in Shannon and Cork for the winter months. And among the staff affected by this are more than 100 pilots and cabin crew directly employed by the airline. Michael O'Leary has urged all EU governments to immediately and fully adopt the EU uh, travel system. So when might Ryanair be back in Cork and Shannon airports? Well, I'm joined on the line now by Owen Corrie from Air and Travel magazine. Owen, good morning to you. Good morning, Claire. It's devastation. Romantic Ireland or regional Ireland is dead and gone. And with Michael O'Leary or Michael O'Leary's schedule in the grave. Yes, um, it's very everyone's difficult. Everyone's looking for at carnage this morning. Very difficult for the staff who are impacted by this. And of course, it has a ripple effect as well on the businesses there who've already been suffering. But I suppose the light at the end of the tunnel looks ever dimmer. It's a bit of that. I mean, the big question now is about summer 2021, how much will return? And um, let's look at what's left, because closing your base means then there are two Ryanair aircraft based in Cork and two based in Shannon. It doesn't mean you finish all your services. It means that you don't have crew uh, and aircraft there. And that is where the real knock on with airports, with all the local employment, all of that boosts the region. They reckon each Each based aircraft is worth just over a million euro to the place that it's placed. That's what's been lost by Cork and Shannon, but only for the winter. The big query now is, will they return those based aircraft for the summer with all the attendant costs? There will still be services there, but, you know, we've got, we're down to something like eight Ryanair flights a week from both Cork and Shannon. And Knock, which hasn't been mentioned, that's down, that's lost 80% of its winter services. It's down to seven Ryanair services a week. All of those are going to be Ryanair aircraft based elsewhere, uh, places like Manchester and Birmingham and uh, Stansted. And how easy is it to reopen a base once the decision has been taken to close it? It can be done fairly quickly. Ryanair are very nimble. Uh, By aviation standards and their tradition has been that they've been very quick to act. That's how they moved from being a turboprop in 1985 to being Europe's biggest airline. So you can see the way they reacted to uh, coronavirus crisis this summer, very nimble compared with competitors. They'll also be watching just in case uh, if there's business to be done, for instance, next summer out of Cork and Shannon, and somebody else starts moving into their patch, that's when they'd be very, very quick to move back. I do think they also are quite patriotic, despite appearances sometimes. They do like Ireland, they do like regional Ireland, and they are fairly committed to keeping as much business in Cork and Shannon as they can. But the question which aviation is asking, everyone is asking is, what degree, what what business is going to be done in summer 2021? The winter's a write-off. What's happening summer 2021? How much demand will there be? Okay, and And um, they're also looking at their bases elsewhere. Toulouse in France, that's going to close and there'll be other cuts elsewhere too. They're very quick to close bases if the costs run high. We've seen them shut down all their bases in France over trade, over uh, legislation. Uh, it was employment rights legislation. They did something similar in Scandinavia. Then they moved back. They threatened to close a base um, when they are negotiating with pilots, as happened with Vienna and with some German airports. So they are quite nimble. It, they're, it's not we not in a situation that we sort of write off everything that's going to happen. But the real problem for Cork and Shannon is that they only show in town. Cork is effectively left with Aer Lingus Heathrow, Amsterdam with KLM and Shannon has nothing. So they're very dependent on what what, what Michael O'Leary does uh, um, next March. Uh, it'll be April the 1st it will be the reopening of the base if it reopens. And that is probably where we'll hear a lot more for Ryanair during the winter particularly on government policy and EU aviation policy saying If you want us to come back, this is what you have to do. Okay, And then this European traffic light system, there's no there isn't a country on it with a green light. It's carnage. Um, What was agreed, what emerged from the meeting last Tuesday was not what was agreed in advance by the Commission. The way this was supposed to work was the uh, recommendations went to the member states and they came back with something resembling what they were recommended. 
the key thing that uh, all of the aviation groups, IATA, ECTA, the, the Airlines for Europe, all rejected it within an hour of it being announced. And the reason they did was that it allowed too many get-out clauses for member states. Member states, when they get nervous, start blaming each other. It's not just um, a sort of thing that it, 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 every part, country in Europe starts looking at the neighbours saying your rates are higher than us and the whole closure of borders that uh, the EU has been trying to prevent has been a, a gathering movement. So giving member states this um, if, this ability to opt out, not uh, two weeks in advance, as had been the proposed document, but 24 hours in advance, that made it impossible to plan a holiday, never mind to plan um, a, an airline schedule. And there were all there were um, all sorts of hopes that there would be a more extensive regional interpretation and that the traffic light system would um, specify that orange and green be treated the same. Uh, in other words, people do, would not have to quarantine coming from orange and green countries. As you mentioned in your prelude there, that's a little bit redundant because by next Monday, uh, Germany's already fallen off the, uh, um, the orange list into the red. And by next Monday, two or three more countries might have fallen off as well. So we could end up with two or three countries on the European green list having come out of the um, the, the farce that was the Irish green list that uh, launched earlier in the summer. Owen, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed on all of that. Owen Corrie from Air and Travel magazine.